Do you have a camera? Yes, a camera. Uh, a Nikon or a Canon or some other kind of camera. Do you? Would you sell it to me? Yeah, I'll give you $50 for it. Uh, what, about 30, 35, 30 pounds? Give you $100 for it? Give you about, what, 60, 65 pounds? What would you sell it to me for? And you'll settle on a price, I'm sure, and uh, make a little profit. Now, uh, would you sell me your eye? And you say to me, my eye? No, I'll sell you my camera if you give me enough for it, but my eye? I can't replace my eye. No, I wouldn't dream of selling my eye. Why wouldn't you sell your eye? Well, I... I, I need it. Well... Couldn't you get another one? No, probably not. Uh, even with transplants? No, I... I wouldn't risk exchanging my eye for another eye. No, it's too valuable for me. I, I depend on my eye. I don't depend on my camera the way I depend on my eye. But your eye is just another camera. I mean, it just has a focusing mechanism, the same as a camera. Why, why wouldn't you sell me it? And you'll say, well, I wouldn't dream of selling it. I mean, first of all, it's far better than any camera. Uh, yes, it has a focusing system, but it's far more advanced than the latest electronic focusing system that we have invented. I couldn't. It's invaluable. My eye is beyond value. Well, where did you get it? I... Where did I get my camera? I got it in the photography shop. I... Where'd I get my eye? I, it, it came with the territory. I, I just got it. it. It was with me. Her eye wakened up and there it was. Well, well, it came from my mother's body. Well, where did your mother get it? Well, well, she made it. Well, did your dad and mum make it? Do they know how to make it? No, no, they're not in the eye business. They're in the child business. Well, they're not in the child business. Well, well how did it come about? And you know that you're forced to say, well, I don't know. It's a kind of a mystery. And if I said to you, well, can you explain where the things like your eye and your ears came from? And what about your brain and the other gifts that you have? Where did they come from? And the best you can kind of mumble is, oh, well, well, evolution, you know, evolution, Elan Vital, uh, a Big Bang theory, uh, explosion in the universe, uh, uh, decomposing substance. Uh, that's where it came from. And, of course, if I said to you, your camera, where did it come from? And you mumbled, oh... <laughs> Evolution, uh, Ela Vital, uh, decomposing substance, uh, Big Bang theory, explosion. You know, you would begin to feel that I was looking at you strangely, and you would begin to feel stupid. And I would say to you, now, wait a minute, you know that camera didn't come from an explosion. You know what explosions produce, and cameras are, are not some of the things that explosions produce. Now, be sensible. Where did the camera come from? And you say, well, it came from the factory, you know, in West Germany, or it came from the factory in Japan. It, it, uh, and you mention the maker, the Nikon people. They uh, designed it. You can see that it's carefully designed. You can see how cleverly it's done. You, you can see it must have had very intricate hands and very clever minds to design it and i say to you what about the eye and you say well it is cleverer than the camera it is more cleverly designed it is more compact it is more spontaneous and natural in its operation it does last longer Yes, it must have had some kind of design or designer behind it. And that's, of course, what we've been saying over these past months on this broadcast, that all the evidence points to the fact that there is an intelligent mind behind the universe that has made and given you the presents that are the most valuable presents that you have ever received. And do you remember what we said yesterday, that... The being behind the universe has shown himself in 
this um, son of his that uh, lived about, uh, oh, over 1960 years ago. And this son uh, of his, who is known, you remember, as Jesus, said that his father gave us these presents because he loves us. That's why you have an eye that is better than your Canon or Nikon camera. That's why you have hearing that is better modulated than the best Bang Olufsen sound system that you could buy. That's why you have hands that are cleverer than the most recent thinking robots that we have produced, because you have a dear creator who knows you and has counted even the hairs on your head and loves you. And that's why he's given you these things. He's given you these presents, not just so that he could see roses being smelled or so that he could see your nose smelling, he gave you these presents because he really thinks a lot of you and he loves you and he wants you to be his friend and he wants you to live life with him beside you as your friend and he wants actually to take part in it. He knows why he put you here and he has thoughts to feed down to you if you will just listen for them. And that's what we've been saying. And of course, we shared yesterday that what we have done is refuse that whole plan. We've said, no, we're not going to depend on them feeding us thoughts down to us. We can decide for ourselves what to do. And so we have determined to live life on our own in this world. The result is, of course, that we've missed something that is vital to us. That is love. We were made for his love. That's why we were made. We were made for the love of the Creator. That's what gives us our sense of meaning in life. That's what gives us our sense of value. When we know that He, the Creator of the world, has not only made us as another of the billion little flies in the universe, but that He loves us personally. That's why His Son said, Are you not? Look, there isn't a sparrow that falls to the ground. Not a little sparrow that falls to the ground but your heavenly Father knows. Are you not of much more value than many sparrows? And so you are. And when you are without that love, through ignoring the Creator and living life as if there were no God and as if you were God, then you miss that love. You have a great lack in your life, a great emptiness, a great, uh, somebody has said, a great God-shaped void in your life. But there's a great emptiness, a great lack of love. And it doesn't matter how you go through the machinations of your mind saying, oh, I'm not a dependent creature, I don't need love. You do need love. That's why you were made. And of course, we have to fill that space somehow. And that's what we have done from the very beginning of the world. We men and women have tried to fill the void that is left by that lack of love from our Creator. Because we have ignored him, he has been unable to communicate himself to us. He doesn't force himself upon us. That's why he gave us free wills. So he doesn't force herself, himself upon us. If we ignore him and reject him, he has to accept that. And so we have lacked his love, and we have a great sense of a need of love. And what we have done, of course, is we've turned to the world itself to try to get a substitute for that love. And uh, I don't know if you understand anything of the uh, record of history that uh, you find at the very beginning of the Bible. There's been so much cynical talk about those early stories being myths that, of course, we've kind of ignored them. And uh, we can talk about that whole charge that there are myths in uh, these coming broadcasts, but it is important to see that they actually are the deepest explanation of reality that we have. And uh, they're a very good uh, description of what we have done in order to find a substitute for God's own love. And actually it's put there in the form of a tree of knowledge of good and evil, you remember. God presented it that way because he was presenting it to mankind in his childhood. And it reads like this. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband and he ate. And that explains where we looked for to find a substitute for the love that we were made for. I'd like to try to explain that tomorrow and maybe you'd think about it yourself until we talk.